Hey everybody, welcome to Houdini Hangout for the 1st of March. It is day one of Mardini, um, what seems to be uh, coming an annual uh, thing for uh, side effects to do. Um, put out a little competition for um, for the month of March, uh, looking, you know, having people uh, make different uh, animations and things like that, or still images. Um, you know, once a once a uh, once a day for the whole month. Um, if you haven't checked it out uh, before, here it is on their website. Um, this is the uh, little chart that we're going to be going off of here um, to to uh, see what the prompts for the days are. Uh, today's the curve tool. Uh, Revolve is tools tomorrow. N uh, node tool, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, copy to points, sweep, all that kind of stuff. They go through Vellum, uh, Side Effects Labs, Kin Effects, and Solaris. So a lot of really cool uh, different nodes in here to play around with. Um, not sure how many of them I'm going to be able to do this year just because of uh, a lot of personal stuff that I've got this month. I was able to do them all last year, but... Um, this year might be a little bit trickier. So, um, yeah. So if you're interested, you know, there's some cool prizes to be won, and uh, yeah, just a lot of a uh, lot of interesting things that you'll see out there. Um, uh, I I believe uh, I think his name's Paul Estevez um, was doing uh, different uh, was kind of putting a little video out for each of the nodes. I think some of them he's probably done previously. Um, I know he does those kind of like uh, node recap videos, but um, yeah, so uh, should be should be pretty interesting to uh, get a chance to play around with these. Um, if you haven't thought about doing it, hi I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun for me to be able to do, uh, dedicate time to do it all uh, all month last year. Um, we'll we'll see how this this month goes. Um, but for me, but uh, yeah, so uh, tonight we're going to be uh, working with the curve tool uh, in the geometry uh, chain here. I like the way that they put this graphic together. I think it's pretty fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's uh, some details here if you are interested in getting something put together before uh, midnight tonight. Um, but uh, you can always post them, I believe, afterwards. You could post them, but they won't be eligible for the prizes or the point if you don't do it before midnight. So um, just something to keep in mind. So. Yeah, Mardini 2022. Uh, you can check it out on Side Effects website and uh, you can get more details there. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be using the curve tool tonight. Um, my plan is to make some sort of, uh, I think I want, I think, I think I'd like to do something that's like, um, you know, some, some volumetric stuff. Um, use the cool curve tool to draw some paths for some like, I don't know, maybe like, magical like projectile type things to be going through space um and uh kind of guide them around that way maybe have a couple different paths that they'll go on um but uh yeah that's kind of what i'm thinking so um i think i'm just going to start moving ahead with that and as we go if as always if you guys have any uh suggestions or thoughts or uh want to tell me I'm doing something totally the wrong way I'd love to hear it as always this is you know certainly not I am not the the all um all-knowing expert on Houdini just really love the software love using it um and uh really enjoy hearing you know learning more from other people and hopefully uh you can learn something from me as well so um I guess with uh, those thoughts out of the way um, I'm just going to get started here and start, uh, rolling through some, some Houdini stuff. So let's, let's do it. Um, so the first thing I'm thinking here, and as always, we'll drop down a geometry node and I'm going to grab that curve tool because that is what I'm thinking. So we've got our curve tool here. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna think about what kind of angle I want to do for this. Maybe it'll be like a, like a kind of like a I don't know we'll just kind of put a camera down here just so we can start thinking about where these paths are going to live and just kind of give ourselves some some reference here to kind of work off of uh, unlock that so I'm not stuck in it and uh, I'm going to go to the top view so let's uh, let's set this into the top view and I'm going to draw some curves here 
So I'm going to take the curve tool. Uh, I've got our nice uh, new viewport uh, settings and things like that that they've added in Houdini 19, which are just great. So uh, let's think here. I think I'm going to have this come from off screen, maybe do some sort of curl and go off. And maybe I'll do maybe like two different paths for things to be, you know, moving around on. Maybe, maybe more if we, if we get some time, I could always draw some more in. But let's see, we're just going to start putting some paths down here, start drawing some stuff. I was actually using this tool for um, the Formula One project that I've been uh, working on recently. Um, and I was able to do some cool uh, stuff with that. And hopefully I'll get to share that sometime soon, um, you know, on my, on my channel here. But uh, I was working on that over the weekend and it was pretty fun. All right, so let's, let's tweak these a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the mode here. So I should be able to go into the edit mode and start tweaking this a little bit. So let's just kind of give it something some sort of an interesting path here to work, to go across. I'm just going to kind of move these around in space a little bit. Let's see here. Oop. Just kind of adjust these handles a little bit. You know what? I did not save it yet. So let me do that. And actually, I have an old Mardini folder, so I'm just going to call this Mardini. 22 and we'll call this 0301 the date and uh accept let's call this curve dot dot hip all right uh let's see here i'm just gonna kind of play around with these a little bit and get some get some stuff going on here uh, we might want to lift these points up as well, so let's let's do that. Good evening, how you doing? Glad to have you with us, human. The human element, I like that. Let's see here. We're just gonna kind of play around with some of these points. I'm actually gonna go into my four views, even though this is gonna get a little messier viewing wise. It'll make it a little easier to to move some of these around in predictable ways. So let's just kind of play with these a little bit. A little. So I'm just gonna kind of come up. Kind of play around with some of these Bezier handles just to get a nice smooth curve here. Make sure we're not doing anything too weird. I'm actually going to probably put this back into the camera view. Let's see here. We've got these points. I'm actually going to back those off of the camera, I think, a little bit. And maybe even bring them down. Is there a touch high? So let's do that. Great. So we're just kind of drawing some paths here. And uh, yeah, so we should have this come into the view. And maybe what I will do here as well is just widen this camera view out a little bit so that we're on a little bit of a wider view. Yeah, there we go. Maybe I'll even do it at like, yeah, let's do, let's do 30. It's a little, little abnormal for a, for a uh, camera uh, focal length, but that's okay. All right, let me go back into here, use the curve tool. And I'm just going to kind of tweak this just a little more. I'm also going to raise this one up a little bit just so we're not sitting directly on the ground plane. All right, so we've got a curve here, and that's kind of where this effect is going to take place, this little magical effect. Just kind of tweak some of these a little bit, make sure they're nice and nice and smooth. Be this back point bring down just uh no no i was gonna say maybe a little more but no that's good that's good all right that'll give us some some area for that to work in i'm gonna go back to a single view here 
great. We got our curve path right there that we're going to have our little magical effect go around on. Should be good. All right, so let's. Uh, so we've got our curve here. This is a Bezier curve. Um, so I am going to um, output this. I'm just going to convert it. I think I'm just going to use a resample. Get some get some points on here. Let's take a look at that. There we go. Looking good. Not intersecting the ground or anything. All right. So, oops. Let's take that. That looks like a pretty good number of points. Um, I'm going to use the uh, the quick curve uh, UV that AE library has, which is nice, and that'll give me a nice quick way to get a curve UV attribute. You can actually see it on here, black to red, um, and then that way I can use that to kind of drive an effect down uh, the length of this um, this curve here. So. Uh, I got my curve U there. Great. Looking good. So there's also a curve duplicator in there that I'm going to use. And I believe with this, I will be able to make some, some fun little additions here. So I'm just going to do like, I'll do three copies. Um, and let's just put some twist onto it. Cool. So what this is actually is a uh, a way to create some uh, duplicated splines, basically around a central one. Again, it's just a little tool from AE Lib. Uh, really nice tool set if you're looking for anything like that. Um, and I'm just going to uh, up this curve amount just so we can get some some twists in there. Be kind of a fun thing to add to our fun thing to add to the effect like so let me just make sure that yeah we're still getting a curve uv here um radius we're just going to leave as is i don't think i'm going to really tweak that at all uh let's see i might add just a little bit of noise onto this i don't want it to be too much but just maybe a little bit um and let's maybe bring the scale down just a little bit i don't want it to be too uniform along the whole thing so let's do 0 0.1 Eh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Actually, might keep it a little bit higher just so that it's not not too ripply. Cool. All right. So, what I should actually probably do before um, I duplicate this is um, put down something to remap um, these. Uh, I kind of want objects to kind of travel down these, right? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make it so that it has a frame number that'll correlate to where I want, you know, the objects to be over that time. So I'm going to remap this curve UV uh, attribute to be um, like a frame frame number, basically, or a time. So, so I'll do that before I use this curve duplicator here. Uh, the other thing um i think there's another curve tool that i'm going to want to use is going to be this extract point from curve yep and i'm going to want to cut it at the current time um and that should or an attribute value i guess i could do either of those um that's going to give me a point at those specific um those specific locations along that curve. So I'm going to use that to like attach some geometry to create like uh, an effect of some sort here. So, um, all right. So we've got the curve UV here. Let's just do a, uh, why don't we do a point, point wrangle, do a little bit of X here. I haven't gotten too much into that um, previously, but this will be, should be pretty, pretty simple. So, all right, so we got our curve U, and I'm going to reset this uh, timeline just because I don't want to be rendering out uh, all that, all those frames. I'm going to set it to about 120. I think that's a pretty reasonable amount to render. And I'm going to have it start, hmm, probably have it start at like frame one just because it's going to be off frame. And I think I want it to get to the end by maybe 96 here. So, 
I'm going to make a couple um, uh, f uh, parameters that I can use. So I'm going to do um, chi. So I'll do actually, sorry, int start frame equals chi, which is going to make an integer uh, parameter or channel. And uh, I'm going to call this one start frame, just like that. And then I am going to also make an end frame. Name these real quick. End frame like that. Good. And start it do that and that should that gives me two different uh integer values i'm going to set this to 96 start frame to one and so now i've got those set in my vex code here as start and end frame uh and then what i want to do is create um let's see we could just call this a uh maybe we can do this as like a current frame equals let's see that's going to be a float i believe is the best way to do that we'll see if i have to do that as an integer maybe an integer would be actually make the most sense um and then i'm just going to do a fit zero one since it's a curve uv or a curve u attribute i know it's going from zero down there to one up it went away that's fine so I'm going to do um, my at curve view, set this to be, and set reset these to be start frame and end frame. And that should give me um, a float value for my current frame. I'm going to write it out this way just by changing it. And so there we go. I've got my current frames from 1 to 96. So that's looking good. Um, let's throw this in here and see if I can get a point off of that. I don't know if that will or not. I think it should. Strat, ooh, excuse me. Uh, attribute value. Right, current time. There's our distance attribute here is gonna be our current frame. And let's see if that's gonna actually give us anything there and it is oh right so my bad this is uh this is actually looking at current time uh as a as a uh probably in seconds uh, so that's why this is actually not uh, working because i have that as as frames so let me just look at this and see where we're actually going here yeah we're only going a little bit down this path and you can see that because current frame is at one so at one second it should first show up Let's see if it does well, maybe yeah there you go at one second one frame it shows up and then goes from there so what i actually want to do is set it to be uh how many seconds it is so um so each of these is one so one two three four so at four seconds is what i want it to be between so what I'll just do instead is um, I can just do this divided by 24 and divided by 24. That should work instead. Yep, there we go. Basically, what I'm doing there is just dividing it by the by the frame the uh, number of of frames, and there we go. It definitely worked. Cool. So we got that point traveling along there, and I'm going to attach some geometry to that um, as it goes along. Didn't have to do any animation or anything like that. We can just simply use that start and end frame to drive our animation. Um, and what I can do as well is take these two these two nodes, actually split it off of here, and I could throw them down here. Oops. And this should get me points on each of those each of those different uh, paths. And now that I'm looking at it, I actually think those are probably too many twists because it looks like it's almost like twisting completely every time. So I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. Um, let's do it like half of where we were there. 
Yeah, that's better. Cool. All right. So, I mean, you could do this step however you'd like to. It could just be noisy stuff, you know, whatever. There's there's a lot of different ways you could do that part of it, but uh, this will give us those, those points that we're looking for. Um, and actually what I could do is... Um, is offset each of those curves a little bit so that they're uh, slightly uh, separate. So let's just do that real quick. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do that by, uh, let's see, I can just do a random number. So I'm gonna say uh, float curve offset. I'm gonna equal that to random based on the prim number. And I'm just gonna look at this real quick by changing it to F at curve offset and in my semicolon here. Let me just look. All right, so I've got, yep, I've got, those are all getting the same prim numbers. Value between zero and one. And what I'm gonna do is just take this, reset it to a float so I can have it not be writing out that attribute and put this in a fit. So I'll do another fit 01 and just, I'm going to hard code these in, probably just do it. I don't want it to be too much. So we'll just have it refit between zero and, or you know what? No, we'll do it between negative 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. Maybe that'll be a good amount of randomization. So that should just give us a little offset here, and we can add that to the cur uh, plus curve offset. We can add that into the current frame, and that should give us our offset that we're looking for. Sure enough, it offsets those points differently. I think that's a little too much. Probably, you know, I'm just doing this on the fly, so it's, you know, I'm obviously not thinking of how far these really should be apart. So let's just reduce that quite a bit. And uh, now we've got a couple points that are offset a little bit in space like that. Um, we could also have it randomize it on different frames, but, um, you know, or, or have just add in some noise to the, uh, to the attribute here for current frame, but I think that'll be fine for right now. Um, yeah. So the good thing here is that we should be able to, um, now if we wanted to draw in another curve, and get pretty much the same uh, thing to happen here. So what I'm going to do is just throw on another curve node here, just to just to kind of check our check our setup and make sure it's working properly. And I'm going to go back into I'll go into the four view so I can see what I'm what I'm looking at here. So here's my top down view. Let's go into the camera one here, so I kind of know where we are. And let's do that and that. I'm just going to kind of draw a curve through here and then maybe have it go off screen over here, maybe like that. That's probably too far. I believe if I middle click on this, it'll let me drag it around. Yep, that's right. So even if I'm in the edit mode, it'll, the middle click will let me drag it around. I'm going to hit F to go back into that edit mode again. Oop. Let go of that, please. And this is going to help me do that. I'll right, just see if this this works should looks like it did looks like we got curves there so that's good so we've got our our effect working just fine and i'm going to just tweak this a little bit so let's grab this guy we'll maybe leave that lower a little bit there grab this one hey going crazy have that come up this one's up as well. Let's end ones. Also, maybe be a little. Where is that? There it is. Hmm. Not sure why it's doing that specifically. That is a little strange. Because I was grabbing two of them at the same time. I'm not sure. Let's 
Uh, it's just a little particular about where I need to grab that at, I see. All right. this a little bit, get it to be somewhere where can it cool. All right. Well that's something I guess. All right, so let's take a look at where these kind of points go along here. So they come in, kind of dance around, go off. Cool. All right, that's our effect. Got some some curly uh, curly points going on there. Got our curve node, and we've got some extracted points here, and we can use that to. Um, put some, uh, put, attach some geometry on there. So let's do that. Let's, I think we're just gonna do a sphere, that'll be easy enough. Try and put that down. Do a copy to points. Grab both of these here. And now we should have spheres at those locations. Looking good, except for the fact that they're gigantic. So I'll scale them down a little bit. Cool, looking good. Turn these points off so we can see. Oh, could actually probably make those a little bigger. And what I'm gonna do as well is um, before I do this extract points, I'm actually gonna do an uh, orient along curve just to make sure that, you know, these are actually getting some sort of orientation uh, data here from these, you know, kind of in the, the um, axis of that curve I, I just if i'm looking to uh to actually have these things you know kind of move around I'd, I'd like for them to at least be sort of pointed down the uh the axis of the the curves so let's see here oh yeah i see why that's not actually so we're doing p but we also want to extract the n and can orient up. Sure. Those will all work. There we go. Now we've got those actually oriented along that curve. It's good just in case we want to do any additional tweaking with it. At least I know I've got those attributes oriented in there. So, um, cool. So we got the sphere here. Copy to points. Great. That's looking good. Um, I think what I, I think I can go from there and start doing some uh, some pyro stuff. We can always tweak these curves as well because they're just simply driven by these base curves up there at the top. So let's just put down a null here, and we'll use this as our out. Energio. Color that green so I can ease just for ease of viewing. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to make a tweak before I even go anywhere. I'm going to have this go back a little further here. Maybe even have this do something just slight, oops, slightly different here. Just think I'd like for that to be a little different. Oh, that's actually way I should have been looking through the viewport here. All right. Cool. They're gonna fly around like that. Do their thing. Nice. All right. Um 
obviously we might not i might not be able to render all these frames tonight but be my attempt so let's let's get i just call this emitter or sorry let's call it sim emitter color it light purple the geo node here and call this sim darker purple object merge in that emitter geometry here and that should be fine in emitter geo so yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're all enjoying uh, seeing some of this stuff, this uh, some simple curve and tool stuff. Um, if you have any suggestions or questions, please drop them in the chat as I'm as we're kind of working through this here. Be would love to you know give you some insight on maybe what choices I'm making or if you have any questions about anything at all. Happy to uh, chat about pretty much whatever. So yeah please feel free to put your uh, comments and questions in the chat. And as always, I am not the uh, Houdini expert by any uh, stretch of the imagination. So uh, I'd love, you know, I'll do my best to answer your questions. And if not, I can try to figure them out um, off uh, off stream if I, if I need to, and uh, can always reach out to you somewhere else and let you know if I figure out the, uh, the, que the answer to your question. So, Anyways, all right, so we got our emitter geo coming in here. Let's do a uh, pyro source. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Let's do source. Hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I do have mops as well. And I think I actually have that installed as well. Uh, yeah, you know, I honestly, I just, I'm so used to using the, the regular tools in, uh, in, um, uh, in Houdini that I sometimes just totally forget about the whole mops, like kind of concept. Um, even though I come from a cinema 4d kind of background, um, you know, I just, sometimes I forget about mops, but yeah, that's a great point. Mops, mops is a, uh, is an awesome, uh, tool set to use as well. All right. So we got our points going here. Let's see here. We're going to do, let's see if this will, will this change every frame? No, it won't, which is great. At least I don't think it is. Just double check. So I'm using this to to kind of do the surface scatter. No, it doesn't look like they're changing every frame, which is great. I'm actually going to do a volume scatter instead, though, because I think I want it to be a solid, you know, uh, source of smoke. So maybe we'll do 0 0.25. It's a good, maybe a good spot to start. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just rolling, just rolling with it. Um, yeah, those AE libs are really, really nice. Um, they, he's, they've made so many cool, um, different nodes and things like that in there. Um, there's even some cool solvers that they have and things like that, that I've used over time. So he, great, you know, great set of tools, highly recommend. So, all right, we got our pi resource here. Let's initialize, boo, I'm gonna do some burn, why not? Maybe, do I, if I do this, yeah, it'll add color on there, great. And then um, let's also, Nah, let's do that. We'll do burn and some color. No, no, we don't even need color. I'm gonna do color from uh, from the the volume. So we'll just tweak the uh, color of the pyro. So let's leave that. Um, I'm gonna do rasterize volume rasterize attributes. Drop that down and. if I need to no I don't need to worry about that all right so we'll do burn temperature 
uh, can normalize it by the, for some reason, I think they always have that checked. So we'll, we'll, at least when they set it up, um, have it preset. So let's do this as zero five. No, we can go way smaller than that. Let's do two five. Great. All right, so we got our volumes coming in here. That's looking good, but that's pretty wasteful to be doing it that way. Uh, okay, instead of doing it that way, let's, let me just think about this. Because we're making this huge volume that does not need to be created, that's just silly. So let me just do one quick thing here. Under the emitter, I am going to, uh, let's see. I wonder if there's a way to do in here if I can say what curve it's from. If not, that's no big deal. But that's okay. I'm just gonna do a connectivity just to get a quick class in here as well. Put this on the primitive, call this class integer, great. So each primitive should have their own class. And when I duplicate them, that should get duplicated over as well. Then I can just take these down here. These should be getting, make sure this class, oh, sorry. I'm doing this so quick, I'm not even thinking straight. Uh, instead, it should be on a point attribute because that'll be easier to get across. It should still set them up as two different classes and should duplicate just fine in here as well. So that should be all good. And then when I come down here to extract the points, I can just tell it to extract the class as well, I believe. Let's see. Well, it looks like we lost the class here somewhere. Where the heck, where'd it go? Right on the curve, we still have class. Just type in class here, is it gonna come through? Yeah, there we go, perfect. Oh, it looks like there's also a copy input primitive attributes here that you could use as well. So either way, that would be fine. Uh, you can make that work either way. So we got our class there. And then what I can do in here is just do a simple, um, I mean, there's probably, there's probably cleaner ways to do this, but I'm just going to do it. The fastest way I can think of is just like a split and do this group uh, from points. We have class in here, right? Yep. So I'll just say class equal, uh, sorry, at, at class equals zero. And then that should just be one side of it. And then the other side. So now we'll just have those. Those will get rasterized. It'll be <laughs> quite a bit smaller. And I'll just duplicate these over. Actually, you know what I'll even do? I'm going to copy these over as just like a, a reference copy just so that they're exactly the same. I don't want them to be different. I just don't want to have huge, um, huge differences in those, uh, those two different um, volumes there. So uh, let's see, we'll do that. And then, yeah, I just don't want there to be a gigantic volume coming in here for no reason. Cool, burn temperature, great. Now, this is where I'm actually now thinking we have two of those, and that's not exactly what we would want to do either. Hmm. Well, let's try it. See if it works. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. We'll see. I think it should. Let's grab Pyro Solver. Do that. Why we got Pyro Source pinned up here? What's going on there? Oh, I type pyro source, that's why. Sorry, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a fast one tonight. I'm gonna be going as fast as I can. So I wanna get something rendered tonight. All right, we got uh yeah, looks like it's working, so that's good. Hey, hey yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's I mean, never seen a pyro sim cooler than that, I bet. <laughs> All right, let's turn it down a little bit and see where we go here. Wait. Okay. 
So the interesting thing here is, is I wonder if, hmm, let me see if I do add another sub step in here, if this gets cleaner. Yep, it does. Okay. I was just hoping that I could get some of that stepping out of there if that, if those sub steps are a little bit cleaned up. So that's good. I'll leave it at one sub step for right now. Don't need to do that. All right, cool. So we got the pyro coming in as such, but I don't want it to dissipate so quick. So that's step number one. I'd like it to stay a little longer. Um, also like to get some more density in there. And um, yeah, so let's start playing around with this here. We've got our resizing and that seems to be going fine. It seems to be resizing just fine. Cool, that's good sourcing we've got that sourcing density and temperature and burn and v i don't actually have the velocity probably coming in here which would be helpful so why don't i do that i'm going to go back to here on each of these points and i'm just going to do a trail sop right here throw that in real quick and we'll just compute velocity there should give us our v values and there we go velocities are coming in perfect and that should copy over to our spheres which, which it is in fact i could even do that after this copy to sphere just in case you know some of those velocities will be maybe slightly different because it's doing a little bit of like a you know some twisting and things like that so that might actually give us a little bit more interesting results so let's come down here and I will add in, uh, since we already have V on these particles, we do not have V on these particles. Why do they not have V on those particles? Um, if I do velocity, there we go. Now we should have V on those particles, but it's, that's weird. Why is it not bringing that through? Why is it not bringing through my velocity? Hmm. Sorry, just need to think for a second. Well, forget it. I'll just, just change that. Take this trail. And I'll put it over here. That should work. I can have two of them. That's fine. So now we should have a velocity here. Let's see. Let me just check that real quick. Yeah, looks like we got a velocity. Yep. That's velocity to me. All right. Cool. Well, that'll work. And then down here, we'll just add in V as well, just so we have velocity coming in. There we go. And that should come across to this side as well, because I have those copied. So now we should have velocity in here as well. We do have two different velocity fields, but that's okay. I think we should be all right with that. It might not love that, but I think it's going to work just fine. All right, cool. Let's check our, some more of our sourcing here. We got burn, which that is one of the things that we have set up in here, and temperature. So that's cool. Burn, temperature, density. We don't have any density coming in, um, but we should be able to drive that from our um from our uh combustion so when we set we turn that on it should we should be able to source um density from the burn we just do <laughs> what did i do all right collision we don't need any collision here off Field guides, temperature, dissipation, let's see, shape. We'll work on that in a second. Um, let's see here, where would that, that be? Not have that select selectable in here possibly not which is interesting well in that case we'll just add in some density why not there we go density 
I'll add this in, add in some density here. That's strange that that didn't actually come over, but I guess it can't update both of them. And I'm going to add density in here as well, just to make sure we get some some smoke in here. Should have those in. Yep. Yeah, all right. And then I'm going to do a pyro bake volume at the end here and let that drive our look. So let's see here. Initialize. Nope, I don't need to do any of that. I'm just going to up the smoke scale a little here. Great. All right. We do have density coming in. Perfect. 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 Great. Got our smoke our smoke coming in. We could also turn on the fire setting here and that should give us some some fire. Yes. Excellent. All right, cool. So we got that stuff working, so that's good. We can also tweak that in here if we wanted to as well, just preemptively get some density in there and fire intensity. Yep, looking good. Cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up the uh, the sorry the shape here the fields. I'm going to set the dissipation down a little bit so we don't lose that so quickly. So let's I don't know. Let's try that. Uh, flame. Great. Let's see. So now we should hopefully keep that smoke for a little bit longer. Looking good. I'm also going to change the field here and make the buoyancy a little less. Let's maybe quarter that so it's not going to be rising up so quickly. Cool. Nice, nice. <laughs> See what that looks like from our camera angle here. <laughs> Fun. All right, let's let's just see what that looked like here again. <laughs> Actually, don't even see that one up at the top really. All right, let's do the buoyancy just a little more. It's probably a little too too small. Let's do. 0.35. All right, so let's add in some uh, some of these attributes here. Disturbance is like kind of like a uh, something to break up uh, what I've heard referred to as these like kind of mushroomy kind of aspects of these clouds. So this should start to break up some of these um, details of our sim here, and should hopefully start to break up some of those little mushroom details. Uh, let's bring that up a little bit. Maybe we'll bring it up to two. Let's see how that starts to look. Yep, it's going to start to add in a little bit of disturbance here and some, um, it'll add in some elements there so that this isn't so, so smooth. It's going to start breaking those up a little bit. Let's open this up here. And uh, I think I'm going to take the block size down a little bit. That should, that should change our, uh, that should change the, uh, the size of the noise that's kind of getting added into this sim here. Starting to see it break that up a little bit, which I'm liking. You can see here that this is this is the disturbance that we're uh, that we're kind of hoping for there. So let's just play this back again. Yep, cool. Looking good. Looking good. And what I'm going to use for the control field on this is actually uh, the speed. So what I'm going to do is go back to our fields and just check in speed here so that it calculates our speed field, which will be helpful. 
also going to go into the setup and just up the cache memory a little bit. Uh, let's, well, let's do 48, just so I don't accidentally get past our... Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think it's starting to look kind of cool. I mean, obviously the uh, the resolution's a little low on it, but I'll tweak that once. I'll push that up once it uh, gets where it needs to be. So with this speed field, we can actually use that as a control field for um, our noise and kind of drive it uh, from that. So if we go back to our shape, we can go down here to use control field, which is already set to be speed. So let's look at that here. We'll maybe kind of give this a couple frames and see if we can compute the range here. Okay, from 0 to 12. So it looks like our speed goes from 0 to 12. Um, so let's, hmm, we want it to be working the most where there is, um, you know, obviously the most speed. So let's set this to be maybe, let's do 7.5. Let's cut it in half. And then I'll do 0 0.25 so that, so that it doesn't actually happen when there's very little movement. So we'll do it like that and see kind of where that gets us. So it should be that as these kind of slow down, we should get less and less. And yep, we can actually see that it's breaking up less and less. And maybe I actually have that up a little too high. So maybe that'll be like, maybe 0 0.1 will be better. Huh. My smartwatch is really bothering me tonight. It feels too tight. I'm going to pull that guy off. Ooh, bother my wrist. Anyways, uh, all right, let's take a look at this. Try it again. Let's keep keep tweaking this a little bit. Maybe, maybe I have that higher than I should. Yeah, I want to kind of get rid of some of those things there. All right. What I'm going to do is I uh, have a little witness camera here, maybe just set a camera up here so I can use this as a as a uh, way to just kind of pre compare them to each other. And uh, let's let's run a little flip book here real quick. Take a look at this. Just kind of want to see these two compared to each other so i think the twisting gives it kind of a fun fun feel with the uh kind of these twisting effects i think it's kind of interesting that's cool when it kind of goes away just poof All right, let's go inside of here. And I'm just gonna actually turn this control field off for a second. I just wanna make sure that I'm thinking about that the right way. And then add this so I can compare them and back up a level here and run another one. I can do the, uh, the old compare and contrast once, once we get our simulation done here oh yeah look at that that is really quite a bit huh you can see the difference there so i guess my speed field is really really kind of goofing us up and probably what it is is i have my maximum value up too high is my guess so why don't i try that i'm going to bring the maximum value down maybe to one um and hopefully that'll that'll kind of fix that that issue let this get to the end here just compare them. Oh, well, there you go. There's there's about as good of an A-B comparison as you can get between uh, why you put turbulence or disturbance in your uh, simulation. Smooth, unnatural looking, and way more natural looking right there. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. Interesting uh, comparison there. So all right, let me turn this off. Go back in here, and I'm just going to tweak this again. Let's turn that on. Uh, let's set this to one and leave that at 0 0.25 just so when it comes to closer to a rest, hopefully it won't be doing too much. And let's just see what that looks like real quick here. Obviously, speed in this situation is the name of the game. So 
Let's kind of see where we get with this. And I'm hoping that this will be a nice kind of in-between where it'll have some breakup but not be pushing it around the whole time because you kind of don't want it to do this weird like fizzly thing at the end that can look a little unnatural. I think I'm liking that. That's feeling good. Get some nice, nice billowy at first, and then it's kind of breaking up as we go through this whole thing. Yeah, liking, liking how that's looking. Let's just kind of compare these against each other. Window sequence list. Yep. So that's with nothing. That's with some control and this is with almost no con this is with no control at all so we're keeping those shapes in together a little bit but breaking them up slightly so there we go liking that so that's looking good doing some fun stuff the other thing we probably want to put into this simulation is a little bit of turbulence uh, that's always nice to have as well and let's see i'm gonna do oops 0 0.5 maybe there. Try that out. Let's do a little bit longer of a pulse length. That's just going to make it not change quite as quickly. Um, yeah. Let's give that a shot, see what happens. This should kind of give it some random movement around in different directions, which I can see already that it's changed it quite a bit in some different different angles. If we look at, let's see here what frames we're on here. We're on about the 70s. Yeah, it's pushed it in some interesting directions there a little bit. So that's going to give it some randomness. Instead of just letting it rise up, it's going to kind of go off in a couple different directions. So that's good. I like where that's going. Yeah, we get a couple different little kicks out there from like here. There's a little kind of a little jet that puffs off there it's just like kind of giving it a little bit of extra something you know just a little something cool all right i'm not gonna spend too much time on that i'm also just gonna play around with this flame expansion why not let's see if we can see if this will push our flames out a little bit more give them a little little something extra yeah let's see what that does just out of curiosity Honestly, not even 100% sure what that setting's going to do. I was thinking it was going to be kind of like uh, pushing it out based on, um, you know, how the uh, the fire is kind of, you know, the, the burning is going there. But I don't know if that's actually what it's doing. Let's see here. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. It really gives it quite a bit more randomness than just those paths with uh, adding that turbulence in but let's see here i like how you get the little kick at the end here it goes <laughs> that's fun all right, let's take a look at this here. See see what the difference is. Well, I'm not really seeing a lot of difference with the uh, the flame expansion. Eh, we'll leave it on. Why not? Why not? All right, um, 
what else should we do here? Um, all right, so I'm going to just t tick a couple of these things on. I'm going to convert them to VB VDBs just because that's going to be a lot more uh, convenient for when we get to the next step. Uh, it's going to be a better uh, kind of... It's going to be a more efficient way to kind of save those files out. Um, that should be good. Great. Um, let's see. What else should we do here with this? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should do. Let me go back to camera one here. See what this looks like from that angle. <laughs> Obviously too low of resolution. Need to tweak that. Um... Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to have this dissipate a little bit more. I kind of just don't like that that's sitting there for so long in front of the camera. So let's just do that real quick. Field dissipation. Let's do 0, 0.5. We'll double it. See how that looks. Really going to have to up the uh, resolution <laughs> on that. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> looks like big, huge blocks of... Uh, of uh, Volume, yeah, there we go. Now we can see a little bit better what's going on back there. I like that better. Gives us the opportunity to see back into those back sections of the uh, simulation. Cool, cool. All right, let's uh, let's do a couple things here. Let's reduce the voxel size first. See how how angry this gets at us. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> it's smoother at least, which is good. We don't have gigantic blocks of blobs of voxels but we do definitely see the stepping now because <laughs> we've got quite a bit of stepping in there so let's uh let's up those sub steps a little bit see where we can get still could use a little more let's see here let me see if i can up these to like four like that see if that gets us somewhere good yeah, there we go. Now it's going to take a second, but it's okay. I don't mind giving it a little, a little time. Go. <laughs> Our magical spheres, f fire spheres. Oh, that's cool. It's going to be fun to see those kind of interact like that. Let me check. Let me see this next step here and just see what this is kind of looking like. Gonna make sure that my resolution's looking okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> That's fun. It's doing some crazy stuff now. Oops. Set the camera. That's what I want to do. Well, I guess I want it to dissipate even quicker now. <laughs> That's uh, sticking around too long. That's right in the camera's face. All right. I'm kind of surprised that changed it so much, but it's okay. Let's revert that back to its defaults. Oh, geez. There it is right there. Emit density from flame. Well, well, well. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Oops.
But there we go. That is working better. That looks like that's actually going to dissipate now. Uh, let's see here. The fire. Probably a little too, a little too intense. Could also do it with the scatter instead. Let's see how that looks. Eh, maybe not. Hmm. It does actually look almost a little more magical when you look at it like that sometimes. I don't know. Play around with these a little bit. All right, so I think instead of doing something orange, maybe we'll do something a little different here to make this a little more m mystical. Maybe like... Ooh, that could be fun, like a purple. Maybe like a fuchsia or something like that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's doing something kind of fun. And then set the smoke to be maybe a little darker. Maybe it's like a 0 0.5 or something like that. Let's see how that's. I guess I shouldn't have dragged that so far. I'm going to go at this from above for a second here. Go get it up like this. All right. So what I'm going to do instead here, whoop, hi there, um, is I'm going to just click on these guys here, go back. I'm going to admit these. And I am actually going to stop sourcing the density into it because it seems like we should be able to get that without, without what I was just doing there. So let's see here. All right, let me just turn this down for a second here. Set up. Take a look at where we're at here. Getting somewhere there. Let's just take a look at how this looks. Cool, cool. All right. Um, let's see here. Maybe let this run for another second or so and just see where, see where this gets us. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts or anything you'd like uh, for me to talk about or comment on or anything like that, please drop it in chat. I'd love to. Uh, you know, hear what you guys are thinking. Um, or if you have any, uh, you know, questions at all, happy to try to answer them if I can. Um, if not, I can always try to, uh, you know, look things up or, you know, comment on those at a later time. But I'd certainly love to hear what you guys are thinking. As as always, I'm not uh, the uh, expert at this program. I uh, just really enjoy using it. Really love to work in Houdini. And uh, yeah, just love getting to share that with others. So here we are. All right, let me look back through the camera here and see what this is looking like. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty cool.
Just don't think we needed as much density as I was sourcing into it. Uh, let's see here. So scatter. Something fun. Let's see here. Well, we got some stuff going on here. Should be pretty fun. Pretty fun to see. Um, I'll just reset that a little bit. All right. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is put down a cache file cache. And let's connect that there. There's our file cache node. This is going to be taking in all the things we've got here. Density flame. These are all VDBs. That's great. I think I'm going to render this in Karma. That's my plan. Okay, so we got that there. Change this to VDB. Uh, let's see, the base folder is going to be, sure, I'm going to call this Pyro Sim. Cache. Simulation, time dependent cache, save to disk, yeah, that's all good. Um, the one thing I want to do is set this back down. And let's let it go. It's going to write out those frames to disk. Um, and while that's going, I am going to take a quick break, grab myself a cup of coffee, and uh, should be back shortly. Hopefully this won't take too long. Looks like it's not going to be too bad. Maybe a few minutes. So I will be back uh, shortly. And uh, yeah, hope, hopefully you're enjoying uh, hanging out while we're working on day one of Mardini. Uh, thanks everybody for being here and I will be back shortly. Thanks.
All right, everybody, we are back. <clears throat> Got my coffee, a little bit of decaf, you know, just need a little something warm tonight. I live in the cold northeast, so, you know, got to got to have something warm. We've got a simulation here that ran looking pretty good, I think. Um now I'm going to bring this into Solaris. So let's do that. So I'm going to do a ROP network. And I have actually one other thing that I'm, th oh, not a ROP network, duh. Um, it is a LOP network. I really like doing it this way a bit more than going into the stage um context just because i feel like it's nice that i can go up or down into it and not have to uh you know not have to go um to uh to the uh you know change my context up here or do it any other way i'd have to set up like key shortcuts and stuff it just makes it a little quicker and easier to navigate into and out of i feel like so all right so let's do a scene import let's do scene import all and see if we can't get that stuff to come in hey look at that it's almost like it just worked. The scene import thing is just fantastic. I love that they are, you know, really uh, trying to make Solaris just, you know, be a nice, really nice thing to use for these kind of, you know, even for something simple like this. It doesn't have to be something that USD is going to completely be the greatest thing in the world for. But um, so well, let's see here. So we got Simpyro. Yep. We don't need, let's see, we're just going to do our objects here and just do the pyro, cam one, except that pattern. That should be good. I don't think there's anything even in here, is there? Are these just, oh, these are the, the shaders. That's right. Okay. So we've got our shaders coming in here, right? Because these are um, from the pyro bake volume and from the pyro shader. So let's do that. Let's, the way that you get these to not look so crazy like that is to just maybe put this into a material path like that and flatten the hierarchy. And now you should just have two of them in here. Um, I'm not sure which one's which actually, strangely enough. Let's see, I wonder if I can turn that off up here. Let me just double check that. I actually don't want this to make don't need this to make a shader so I'm actually gonna turn this off not sure if that'll tweak it in that or not let's see here nope uh, let's see you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna clear uh, let's see I'm actually going to use this quick cleanup. Why not get some of these attributes out of here? Maybe that'll stop it from. Nope. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Anyways, we're going to have to assign our own material. This doesn't even make sense to bring in those materials because I want to use XPU. Get it nice and fast. So forget the import materials. We're good. All right. Got open VDB assets there. Looking good. Let's do a material library. And I'm also going to make a grid, just a simple ground plane here. Just look at that real quick. There it is. I'm going to make that way bigger. 10, 10,000 times bigger. That's good. All right, material library. Let's do a, uh, let's see, material X. Cartman Material X subnet would be fine. I'm going to do a standard surface here. Just put that into the surface output. Use it like that. We won't be using any displacement because this is just for the ground. Material X is nice because I know it's going to work in here. So that's good. And I'll just call this ground. And then I can also do a uh, XPU pyro preview here 
And that will be our pyro effect. And actually what I could do here is take this pyro, I believe. Mm -hmm. well, probably should have done that before I yeah, bake the emission volume. That's all right. I can tweak the colors in Solaris. That'll be fine. All right. So material library. So these, I'm just going to call these. Karma shaders. Great. We're going to do assign material. And for this, that should be bringing them all in. If we look under materials, we got ground and the pyro preview. I'm just going to call this. I'll just call this XPU pyro. And we can assign these in here. Um, let's grab our grid and we'll put the ground onto that. And then add another one here and do the pyro. And then the XPU should go on that. Uh, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do a dome light for now. Just some, just have something in here. Uh, I'm gonna put it on kind of low cause I don't want it to be too bright. I just wanna make sure I can see stuff even if the emission isn't working. And let's grab a karma node. I don't think I need the labs karma. Karma should be fine, like so. We're gonna be using camera one and render settings. Yeah, this will be on XPU. Let's look through that camera, like so. And save and cross our fingers that I set that up properly. does look like it's sort of working. It's not happy right now. You know, I'm going to set it back to the CPU engine actually, because I just remembered that I'm probably using optics for my, uh, I think I'm using it for some of my uh, <laughs> some of my stuff in uh, the broadcast, which this will not be happy with. So let's we'll save that for the end <laughs> when I'm actually rendering it for real. All right, let's turn this dome light off and see what we got here. That's curious that the background is lit still, even with. Let's make sure our render settings are set to that one there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Karma shaders here and start tweaking with the pyro a little bit. Make sure we got that going. So let's try this at 25. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Ooh, even. Perfect. Don't even have to worry about those pesky colors. Let's see here what we got. Well, that's orange. Can't say that I want that to be orange per se. Let's see. So that would actually be the one that I would have probably liked to have baked out, but that's okay. We can go in here and tweak it. Yeah, you know what? It is actually kind of cool with it, like in an orangey kind of reddish color maybe. Is actually kind of cool looking. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. See? Huh, that's interesting the way that that mask is working. Hmm. 
right? Let's see here. Let's set the ground to be a little bit darker. Let's do it at like maybe like a dark gray, maybe 0 0.4, maybe even less, two. That'll be fun. Got a little specular highlight going there. The nighttime. I could find a nighttime shader uh, for my dome light here. Let's see. Come on, resources. Have something in you. Trying to remember if I have any. From IHDRI, which was a nice spot to get some free HDRIs from. They're German, I believe, or something. Some, th some language I don't speak. <laughs> so I kind of have to try to remember which one's which. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to open up uh, Adobe Bridge real quick and see if we can find one. don't have Adobe Bridge. Obviously, there's plenty of other options. I just know that this should work for looking stuff up like this. So let's look up resources. Look in here. What? I'm rendering still. I don't need to do that. <laughs> or I at least have this going. So let's just set this back to GL. All right. Let's see what kind of nighttime HDRIs do we have here? Anything interesting? Oh, that's kind of crazy. These are all interiors, aren't they? Yes. These are kind of cool. Hmm. Actually, could be kind of fun, but don't think I want that much light in it. All right, let me go back up a level here and see if I have any. Hey, that's that's nighttime. Ooh, that guy. Maybe that's what we'll use. Hmm. Sky map, that's fun. All right, let's do this one. Right. Texture. They would be fine. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Let's see. Cool. Thanks for joining me tonight, man. I really appreciate it. Or, you know, uh, for whoever, whoever you may possibly be. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. Uh, keep an eye out. I, I might be streaming more this month, just randomly, just with all the, uh, Mardini stuff. So yeah, have a great night or day or whatever time of, uh, time of day it is for you. But yeah, thanks so much for joining me.
don't want this to be on top of that stuff, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I don't know why it's intersecting like that, but it's all right. Bring that down. Got our grid there. Ooh, that's going to be fun, I think. Cool, cool. This is starting to do its thing. Just set that to like 64. So when I actually render this, I'm going to be using the XPU render engine on it. Really all these same settings should work just fine. Um, except that it will, uh, it should obviously uh, be a little bit faster because it has the GPU working with it as well. Uh, just with what I, my uh, broadcasting software, uh, it looks like it will be uh, not happy to do that. I, I could try again real quick, actually, I guess. But let's, let's just see. Let's put this to OpenGL, set this to XPU, go back to Karma. It's not as angry as I thought it was going to be. Let's see. So right now, um, if you're using XPU and you see this, uh, you can see that this is actually only using CPU right now. For some reason, the XPU isn't happening. So I'm just, oh, or the, uh, the optics wasn't working. And there we go. There's optics. Looks like we're still outputting, so that's good. Don't think. Let's just make sure. Yeah, I think we're still. I think we're still okay. Let me actually just move around and see. See what we have here. Yeah, whenever I move around, it uh. Seems like it cuts off my, uh, doesn't like it if I uh, do that. So just going to leave it on CPU for right now. Can at least get an idea of it from there and uh, we can kind of keep going. Turn this off so we can see that a little better. Dome light, turn this off and that'll turn off our lights in the viewport. Great. Uh, let's see here. Blur. Sure, we've got volume velocity coming in here. Yeah, we do. Let's see if that's actually working, just out of curiosity. Well, I don't know if the velocity blur is working, but that's okay. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is actually set up the uh, the depth of field on this. I think I'm going to have it in this area here. So let's do a camera edit maybe. Maybe that will work for us here. And then... 
we do shift F, we should be able to see where our focus plane is here. And let's see, we can do Let's do set or create the focus distance, see if we can tweak that. Looks like we can, but why are we seeing it like that? All right, let's set this back to OpenGL. Oh, right, it's working on the wrong thing. So let's see here. We will put our cam camera one into here. That should actually now do the right thing. Let's see if we can't get this to work. If we can't. I will set this. Let's see here. Focus distance right there. Let's look back through our camera. Uh, let's see here. Let's do nothing. Let's see if there's anything we need to adjust here. Um, Okay, let's see if that'll give us some focus here. That's definitely doing something. That's good. I would say yes, it is. All right. So maybe right in there is where we'll go with that. And then if we have this come by up close, let's see, is this gonna be out of focus? It should be. Let's do something a little good. So it comes by out of focus. Then it should go into focus back a little further. Great. That should be good. Let's see. Oh. Let's see where that focus is set. Looking good. This will actually help us with these close up um, flame, you know, smoke and stuff like that. It'll help blur it out a little bit. Then, as we get further in the back here, we're going to have it looking like that. And then they'll go off. All good. Cool. Right. That's looking good. So the one last thing I was thinking might be kind of neat to do here would be to uh, to actually add in some sparks maybe coming off of these little um, these little uh, spheres. So why don't we try that real quick and uh, we can go from there. So let's try that out. I'm going to turn off the Karma perspective, go up, be out in back in standard Houdini object world. And so let's just do a geo, maybe call this Sims, well, if I can type, Sim Sparks. I'm just gonna grab the same emitter here. And 
is there a there is a spark trail i have not used this yet so let's let's see what happens here what this is going to do might do something oh I'm gonna hide these uh, other objects because i don't want to be seeing them So let's just trying to remember what we're exactly doing here. Okay, so what I need to do is actually a particle sim. So I'll just do a pop, uh, pop network. Mm -hmm. Back to the start. There's our little. <laughs> trailed sim going on here kind of funny all right so let's go here into our pop network look at our sim we don't need to probably have that many birth at the same time let's just hit play here yeah that's probably better i am going to just have them their attributes be add to inherited velocity Let's just double check here. We don't even have velocity on those. So let's do uh, trail stop here and we'll compute velocity. See what that does for us. Oh, so what's going on here is that this is freaking out a little bit and giving us velocity um, because it's seeing some varying geometry um, here in the point count, which is I believe is the, or maybe the point order. Um, so unfortunately that uh, is giving us some weird uh, velocity information, like right there. See how those, see how those are doing some weird, weird stretching there. It's kind of interesting, but um, so yeah, unfortunately that is not going to work and give us any good velocity from that bummer. It's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. It's all right, no big deal. There's our particles, right? Shooting off. Uh, we don't want them to last that long because they're sparks. So let's do uh, inherit velocity. We can just do we can just do set initial velocity. That's fine. There's some variance to them. Birth. We're gonna do life expectancy at I don't know half a second maybe. Life variance zero point two five. They actually, we actually want these to go way faster. So let's do that. Let's just do them at one for right now, even though we uh, aren't gonna really want that to be the case. Let's see here, we'll do. Let's see how this looks. Oh, too far. <laughs> let's cut it in half. Hey. Gonna be four. And I really feel like we want to get some some velocity on there. So let's let's see if we can't do that. Let's do this here. Uh, let's do a trail stop back up here. This should hopefully give us some better velocities. Oh, nope, that doesn't actually have animation. This does. So let's see if we can't get that from there. Let's go look at this. City. Oh, yeah, look at that. They're getting uh, they're getting different attributes. So what we could do instead is we could do this. We could do a connectivity here, and we can do this as point. Let me go back to our geometry spreadsheet. Uh, I'm going to call this 
ID instead because this is going to give us the ID of that curve. So we've got five curves. I'm going to go up here, extract ID from this. Now we should have an ID value that does not change for each point. So we know where each of those are going to be. It's interesting. There's adding in another one. What is going on there? Huh. That's interesting. It must be because it's like a fractional second and it's actually thinking that these are, um, Hmm. That's fascinating. Somehow I missed that. It's okay. Well, we'll match by the attribute here. Should match by ID. That should give us good acceleration the whole way through. Will that be on our spheres when we come out here? Let's see. Turn off those. Make sure things are good. Looking good. Yep. Great. All right. Back up a level. Sim Sparks. Let's go back into our PopNet. Let us add to inherited velocity. Turn that off. Great. So then I'm going to also do a pop drag. Slow these guys down over time. Definitely don't want them to be flying all over the place. Let's give them a little more force here. Cool. All right, let's give them less life. Let's do something like that. Let's see if that's going to give us anything here. Cool. Oh, that's fun. I like this. Oh, that's really, that's something. Thank you, side effects, for an awesome tool. That is fantastic. Boy, that's easy to work with. All right. Let's add some split in there. That's what we want. We want the split. We want to pop off at the end, right? So let's see here. What can we do here? All right, I have not used this before, so I'm kind of uh, going a little on the fly here. Oh, there we go, okay. I think I need these to be way faster. That's my guess. Let's see. Do them all at 10. Come back up here. 
Let's see where this let's see where this gets us. Just adding some variation into those splits. Change the angle of this here. Let's get these maybe a little bit more like bursty kind of things going on there. Cool. Looking cool. It's going pretty good about this. Some little sparks going on here. Let's see what this looks like with our, uh, our simulation. Just play this back. Actually, you know what? I think they could probably even do with shorter lifespans to them, honestly. So let's do that. Pyro. Nope. Wrong one. Sparks. Come in here. Let's just change their life expectancy. Oops. Life variance 0 0.1. We up this a little bit. Let's see. All right, let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking where that's going. <laughs> Feels a little more sparky. Cool, cool. Let's see. Color. Kind of feel like something a little bit more yellowy might be nice. We got sparks there. Let's go back into Solaris and see. Uh, so at our scene import, we should be able to bring in those sim sparks as well. Accept that pattern. There we go. So we've got our sparks coming in here. Those look like they're like have thickness to them. They look way too thick. All right. Let's tweak that. So, nope. Yeah, spark trail. Shape. Let's do zero five. What is this gonna do? Let's go back 
to this, see if that, yeah, that feels a little better. All right, let's see what we come up with here. So I'm gonna make another shader in here. Uh, let's actually just, we can just make a copy of this one. We'll call this one Sparks. Change this over to Emission. Turn that up. We might end up using that. Maybe we'll, maybe we can get some inputs here. Not sure exactly on that one. We'll have to look. Um, but we can always tweak the color right there. Sparks, cool. Let's grab our scene graph tree. Here's our sim sparks. We'll add another assignment here. Drop this in here and then grab our sparks shader. Drop that in the material path. Looking good. Let's check out karma. Oh yeah, we got sparks going on there. Cool. <laughs> well, all right, let's go into our karma shader here. Is there a let's see? Looking to see if there's any shade, any input here that we can use. Let's just type in color. Oh, maybe I could do this here. Um, if I can import it in here. Let's see. Um, Global variables. Hmm. Surface color. That's probably it. Let's see if we can use that. CF. Surface color. Maybe. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. That's working. Wait, let's go back here. I changed this emission. We should be good here. Let's see here. Oh, that's on the ground. Whoops. <laughs> My bad. Well, let's try that again. Variables here to actually import this into the sparks. Let's see. Here. There it is. Base color. Oops. Let's 
restart the renderer to see if that does anything for us. The object highlighting. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did I, can I turn that off? Is that that? Yeah, that's that. Okay. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's just not importing that. Uh, those attributes. Attributes. Cool. And yes. Let's see if that helps us restart it. Okay. This is what I want. Let's see here. Can I do this? The emission color. Oh, that's my problem. Maybe I put in the wrong port. That's something different. I think. Let's check this out. All right, I'm just going to set these colors. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not even going to use that as a Material X shader. I'm just going to use a straight up, uh, maybe a principal shader. Let's see. Good. Let's see here. that update? Yes, it will. So let's see if I can do that and that. Hey, there we go. All right, that's a little easier. Make those a little smaller, possibly. Here, let's see. Here, I'm gonna set this to black for default. Don't want any reflectivity on them. Don't need any of that stuff. What color? Uh, or do I want that on? All right, I'm going to. Back in here and see if I can make these even smaller because they seem gigantic right now. Hmm. Check my uh, sampling here, make sure. Oh, there's one thing. I can up my volume limit to one here. There we go. Get some more uh, actual volume stuff going on here, but better volume sampling.
Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure about these sparks. I'm like 50, 50 on them. We'll see. We'll see how they, uh, shake out in the long run here. Uh, let's see for denoiser. I could use the OIDN, which is a lovely denoiser from, uh, from Intel. Let's see how that, see how that works. Actually, you know what? Maybe the optics denoiser would be a little better in this scenario. There we go. Get some denoise in there. Cool. Smoothing it out nice and quick. Great. Output. Let's make sure I've got this going the right spot. Karma one. I'm just going to call this here. Resolution. That's fine. You can do it at 720. All right. Well, you know, I think this is where I'm probably going to end the stream for the evening uh, just because. I'm going to start getting this rendering going, and I know it's going to get real choppy and weird. Um, so I don't want that to be the case while you guys are all trying to watch this and everything like that. So uh, more or less, this is where I'm going to be. Uh, this is where the uh, effect's going to kind of live. So, um, yeah, so there's my, uh, my uh, what do you call it? I can't think of the word for it right now. My entry. There we go. My entry for the... Uh, for Mardini, day one, curve. Um, yeah, hopefully you found it interesting. I think it's kind of a kind of something cool to, to see and play around with. Um, yeah, keep an eye out, obviously, on the uh, the Mardini page for uh, for some you know for my entries that I'll be putting in hopefully every so often during the month. Don't know if I'll get every day, but I'm going to be putting my entries in nonetheless. So um, yeah, I think that's where we'll leave the stream for today. And uh, as always, you know, you can uh, catch me on Twitter a lot of times. Uh, it's usually probably the easiest way if you want to reach out to me. Uh, Houdini Hangout on Twitter. And uh, yeah, Tuesday nights uh, every week I'm, I'll be live uh, on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, 8 p.m. and uh, if uh, there might be some some more this month just with all of the uh, the different Mardini stuff that's going on so I'll probably be uh, doing that so keep an eye out on Twitter for announcements for uh, the stream so yeah hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed seeing this process and getting it to a uh, point of render and uh, I will see you guys next time thanks for joining me see ya